Hello, everybody. Lex the Gray here. We're finally continuing Misfortune Legacy, which is my long campaign solo RPG. And it's been about a month, so I, I am a little rusty in terms of solo play and this setting. But um, there will be a little sm a time jump along with a, uh, a retirement of a certain character. So... We are going to be using, I think we're continuing to use uh, Maze Rats, which has been a personal favorite of mine, rules-wise. So here's the character sheet for the Watcher. Uh, here is here's the campaign for, I'm sorry, here's the campaign notes uh, for the Misfortune Legacy, which includes everything... As far as the quest list, we have a faction list, locations, and the NPC list. That we this is this is everything that I that has been going on since Misfortune started before the Legacy chapter. So there, like I said, there's been a time jump. I'd say probably f almost a full week since the Watcher, Reglor were speaking to Falaro. A vendor, a store owner in the small village of Terran, which is the home of Reglor. And they, with some time, Falara discovered the source. There's some information regarding the spear, the Holy Spear. I believe that's the name of it. The Holy Spear. And some of our quest items. So. Valar discovered that the Holy Spear has some type of relationship or origin to the Royal Alliance based on a symbol in a book that Valar was holding up. So this shocked everybody. So Breglor and the Watch decided to let's go to the capital. And that's what they did. So there's a small time jump for behind the scenes reasons. The Watcher, here's here's what I summarized. The Watcher journeys to the kingdom of Bethermule. During his travels from Terran, he was accompanied by Breglor. They were ambushed by the Danger House, a contingent of vengeful goblins. Breglor was unfortunately slain in combat. However, the Watcher was able to successfully repel the attackers through the use of a potent spell. The Watcher then proceeded to bury Breglor at a significant distance from the, tra from the trail, deep within the confines of the forest. Following a period of several days, the Watcher continues his quest to locate the missing jewel of the Holy Spear. The only clue he at this disposal is the fact that the symbol of the Royal Alliance is consistent with the origins of the spear. So, Breglor has been slain. And now we have we have now have the character of the Watcher in our rank. He's level two, which was Breglor, so he has a strength of plus one, dexterity plus two, will plus one, attack bonus plus one based on his leveling up, armor is at eight, health is six, that which was also plus two over the starting of four, and I included for his background as former cultist, which he was. Item-wise, these are just six random items I chose from the list of maze rats. Light armor and shielder are defaulted. You can choose two weapons, so I chose spear, which goes along with his character, and bow. Along with a quest item, which is should be in a separate column here, the holy spear. Now, appearance-wise, as I have always pictured him to be mostly, he looks like Gandalf the Grey. I don't have the specific choices from the maze rats tables to where you can design your character. But I've always seen him to be getting off the gray, appearance-wise. Maybe not as tall compared to a, a, um, a halfling, but certainly the large robe and long hair. So this is the Watcher's character sheet. Now, let's begin. Let's jump right in. So I have my dice here. You guys can't see it, but I'll tell you what I roll. Um, I was thinking of how to start this because, I, I, like I said, I'm, I'm going to be very rusty. But we'll stick to my usual percentile system for, for Oracle questions. 
and Maze Rats is a uh, it is a 2d6 system. I have the rules here also in person. If I get stuck on a very simple rule, because it's only literally only two pages of rules, half of that's character creation. So I figure that the watcher right now, because it's been several days, he is camping. And earlier in my little synopsis here, the recap of the of that time jump, it, it says he's been he's in a forest or he's some kind of he's near some kind of forest. So I'm camping in the forest. It's late. And you can hear crickets, you can hear creatures in the background, howling, wolves, etc. You hear the sounds of the forest. And he looks up, he sees it's full moon. There's stars, it's just perfectly clear skies. There's no storms, nothing. It's just clear skies. And as he's looking up, he can see a large, majestic flying creature flying over. It's way up in the sky. Don't know how high from his perspective, but he sees this very strange glowing bird. If you think about it, from the first episode of Pokemon, I think, when Ash sees that um, that rare Pokemon, I forgot the name of it, but it, just picturing that, but it, it's a glowing creature. It's just... It's like a solid white color, glowing, no sparkles or anything, just kind of flying. It's it's flying south. So sees a flying, uh, majestic, glowing white bird uh, flying south. Now let's do a will check to see um, if he has knowledge of what that is. So he has a plus one in will. Now, um, in this game, there is the standard danger throw of 10. I have been known to adjust that a bit, lower it to 8, 6 for normal, 8 for probably you know, slightly difficult, 10 is hard. So I'm going to say this will be 8. So plus 1 roll, I'm rolling right now, and I roll a 5 plus 1, so that's a 6. He is unfortunately not does not know what that is, but he's assuming it's a magical creature of some sort, but he doesn't have the exact knowledge of what it is, like what it's called, or he hasn't seen it before. Just through general experience, he thinks it's uh, just some magical creature. That just happened to see late at night. And as the bird is flying south, it fades away into into the, like just behind the trees, because he's looking up, he's leaning back like against a rock, and he just, he sees the bird and it's just flying and it just the trees covered up and it's gone. So he's just kind of thinking to himself, that's really interesting. Just, he has he's kind of, you know if it's a symbol, if it means anything to him. But again, it's just it's kind of just a random event. So um, he has a little campfire going. It, it's just this nice little cozy fire. He's thinking about Breglor and, and everything they've done. You know the past what couple weeks, a month at most, uh, dealing with Danger House, dealing with uh, Misfits and the, his whole quest to the cap, to the Legion, the Temple Legion, all that stuff that, that happened. And he's just reminiscing the past. It's, you know, it wasn't like years ago, but he's just thinking about recent events. So um, he sheds a tear for Breglar. He remembers him. He just thinks about it, keeps him, him close to his memory. And he's saying that I'm going to do this for you, friend. Not old friend, but I'm going to do this for you, Breglor, because that was Breglor's mission. He was he was destined to um, take this spear and find its true origin. Because remember, Breglor took the spear out of the Temple Legion. It was in a locked case, if I recall correctly, and he took it. And the essentially the Watcher was the quest giver, and now we're playing the quest giver. We we went from NPC Watcher to a player character. So the watcher is just kind of like he's thinking that this is just very ironic. Like I gifted, not gifted, I gave this spear to Reglor. He was destined to find its origin and potentially wield it, but now it's in my hands. And because if you remember if I recall correctly from earlier in this episode, the previous entry or two. 
the watcher was his home was ambushed or it was being um is being overrun by the danger house or well now it's called uh, i think the goblin house I, I believe we changed the name to faction list the goblin house formerly danger house the goblin house were looking around poking around his, his burnt down cat tavern his burnt down home and so he had to go find regular for help so now he's on his own and regular is dead so while he's looking up in the sky just thinking about everything that's happened and, and could potentially happen let's roll a event let's roll a random event so i'm thinking we're out in the forest and there's a 50 50 chance i just don't know if anything's going to happen but if i roll 50 or less something does happen i rolled a 10 a solid 10 at the percentile and because it's a solid 10 he can hear footsteps directly in front of him like leaves rustling leaves like footsteps walking on leaves so um well i rolled that there is going to be footsteps so let's do that so footsteps in the distance but let's roll to see if Reglor, I'm sorry, if the Watcher can hear it. And because it's the forest and it's just crickets and some howlings from you know distant wolves, we'll do a plus one on this. Let's be a plus one for Will. We'll do a Will throw to see if he can hear this. Now, I believe he can. I'm going to do a low difficulty of six. So I'm rolling now. And I'm going to re-roll because one of the dice was cornered there we go so four two that's six plus one that's seven he uh watcher leans up and can hear he hears the rustling of leaves like footsteps so he's looking around he grabs his, he grabs his spear like he grabs his, his best weapon which is his own spear that's a plus one on damage bonus, not a plus one attack roll, which I made that mistake before. So he, he, he grabs the spear, and as he's looking around, the campfire is obviously the only, only real light source in the immediate area besides the moonlight. He's trying to squint to see if he can hear where the lights, where the footsteps are coming from. So I'm going to do another roll. This will be uh, another will roll to see if he can focus and see anything, uh, at least through the bush or through the through the woods, through the trees in the distance. I'm going to say uh, maybe an eight. So he, he rolled again a three, two, plus the one. That's a six. So he's not able to see anything. Uh, he doesn't see anything, but he hears it. So, um, Watcher slowly. I'm, he's, I'm gonna have him slowly stand up, like, and he's standing behind the, the fire, behind the campfire. He's looking around, and these footsteps. I don't think he can tell that they are either human, humanoid, or creature. So, as he's standing up, there's a he sees let's let me let me do a roll here now is this going to be a creature i'm going to say 75 percent chance eight, actually 80 out here at night 80 percent chance it's a creature and yeah i rolled a 27 so it's a d to creature so creature now nothing, nothing specific yet but he is very cautious right now he steps back away from the fire Kind of has a makeshift. No, he doesn't have a tent. He has like a makeshift bed, like some rocks, some uh, some some leaves, and just just kind of a little simple place to rest, to sleep on. Now this large white wolf slowly walks out of the straw of the forest, the clearing, into his spot. So large white wolf enters and it's just looking directly at 
the watcher and his eyes are solid red they're just glowing and the wolf doesn't growl but it's staring directly at the watcher the watcher is standing there he's not attacking yet he's waiting for this wolf to make the move now let's do a knowledge related role to see if he thinks this wolf is is um a threat. So this is kind of be like a role for instinct. Let's do a danger roll. I'll do I'll do a 10 because this is tough. So we have plus one on will. Okay, so I actually got 10 nat natural 10 and then plus one that's eleven. So I think um the watcher You can tell the wolf is a immediate threat. The wolf walks up to the campfire. And just straight through it like the flames do not affect him whatsoever. The watchers backing up. So. No effect. And. Uh, Watcher backs up more and says something in the nature of, let's do, he's going to talk. Well, I, you know, we can try to talk to it. We, it's, it's going to be tough because this wolf could be magical. It could be magical. Uh, it could be a spirit perhaps. So perhaps I think he's going to try to talk to it. He says, what do you want? The wolf, uh, let's roll to see if the wolf answers first before I just I detail what action he takes. So let's do 50-50. I just don't know if this wolf speaks common. 50-50. 52. Okay, so the wolf stops. He doesn't answer, but he stops. Ahead of the fire. Looks at Watcher, still looking at him. And the watcher is very concerned right now because he's probably four or five feet away he's within striking distance and the watcher is butt up he's butt up against the a tree behind him and it, you know again this wolf this this potentially a spiritual wolf just walks right past through a campfire like it was nothing like it was just a it was just grass to him and so the wolf looks around and he kind of turns to his side while looking at the watcher, then looks in one direction. So he looks to the watcher, his eyes, that glowing red, then turns looking to the west. He's not like a pointer dog. He's not just pointing. He's just kind of looking to the west. Now, there is a slight transparency to the wolf. I will give it. I'll give this to the watcher. The watcher has. Let's do this. The wolf faces west. Uh, watcher notices. Wolf is transparent. Oh, yeah, opaque. There's a there's a slight pass through. The wolf can or the watcher can see because of the fire. I wasn't a roll for it, but I think the campfire kind of gives it away. And the wolf, the watcher is adding it up now that this is literally a spirit, a spirit, not a spirit guide, but a spiritual animal walking at night in the forest. And he just stumbled upon one. These are super rare. They don't come out to just anyone. But I think because the watcher is a wise traveling sage, etc., the very old, you know, old traveling sage of sorts, the, the this wolf potentially saw him as. Um, a, as a source for knowledge or, or, or a source to seek something. So the wolf doesn't attack. The watcher looks to the west, looks the same direction the, the wolf is looking, looks west. Now the trail is to is back east. The watcher is um, just after burying Breglor was walking back to the main trail, but it was it was very late. So he camped out in a good little safe area. Well, you know, safe safe as, as it can as can be in a forest. 
he's not on the main road right now. The main road is, is farther east, probably like 15, 20 minute walk. So uh, main road is to the east about, let's do 15 minute walk. So the wolf is still looking west, while the the, uh, the watcher is kind of curious, curiously also looking, and he says, um, "What is it?" So the wolf. Let's see if the wolf speaks now. Let's do. I'm gonna say 70 70 percent chance now. He does. I rolled a solid six. Wolf speaks, but his mouth doesn't move. He just kind of has this echoey voice. It's disembodied voice. It's not um, clear as day, but it's in words. It's not like a riddle, but it's in words. So let's say it, it's he says tomb of he says tomb death. Uh, I'm gonna say tomb death follow, and so I'm gonna say tomb death knowledge to follow and then the wolf uh starts walking to the west in the direction he was looking so the the watcher is kind of not squinting but he's focused what is in the west and i'm going to say there's a clearing now that he didn't see there before but there's a path showing up that the the, the trees kind of open up slowly for this wolf so the trees widen revealing a path to the west as the wolf walks through so this wolf this the spiritual wolf has some kind of domain in this in this forest and the watcher is not intruding but somewhat a conduit for this wolf to to speak to and to interact with so will the watcher divert um take a a step away from his quest to go see what this wolf is doing where this wolf is going i think he is so the watcher uh takes his he picks his stuff up like it's you know it's just a travel bag follows the wolf and now he is slowly walking behind the wolf is not like running but the wolf is walking but then suddenly the wolf starts to the wolf starts to to to, to disappear so starts to disappear and that's because of some clouds so as the wolf disappears the trail the revealing trail remains open so the path he was walking remains there but then uh the watcher looks up and can see that there's some clouds blocking the full moon so he thinks a spiritual animal this 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 yeah spiritual wolf had some connection to the moon to the full moonlight and so he's continuing to walk, and he's walking, he's walking. It, it's not endless, but he does eventually come up to another clearing. So there's a clearing, and he sees a, not a large, but a, a, a fairly maybe 20 foot wide pond. Oops, pond. And it's crystal clear water. It's just, just a solid glowing blue. There is um, no fish in it, but he can see the, he can see the bottom of the pond. There's some of those little floating leaves with frogs on them. It's just a picturesque. It's a postcard uh, image of a pond, basically. And the the somewhat peaks of moonlight can seen and reflect on the on the rippling of the water he's looking around and, like, and it's just this very strange convenience pond in the middle of a very very dense forest and the trees grow tall and barely cut off the sight of the sky 
there's an opening of of where he could see the moon as a as a where it would be clouds blocking it. But as he looks down, that's the tall trees uh, surrounding the pond. But as he looks down, Watcher looks uh, at the center of the pond. There is a like a monolith. There, there's basically a, a strange artifact, like a gray stone, almost like a, like a gravestone. I'm gonna say gravestone. In the middle, it's not floating. It's just kind of in the water. It's kind of half deep in the water. And it looks, it kind of looks, it, 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 it's not a cross, but it is a plaque. It is a, a regular looking gravestone that has, uh, let's do a will check to see if you can see the, if you can spot the writing, if there's writing on it. So I'm going to do tip, difficulty 10 because it's late at night. The moonlight is, is uh, variable. So I'm going to do 10 with plus one on the roll. And it's not enough. So I rolled a five total plus the one instead of six. He can't see. Yeah, so... There's like uh, there's some fog blocking the writing on the gravestone. I'm gonna say the gravestone is actually on a little island in the middle of the pond. So just a yeah, I think that's a little more that makes a little more sense. So he's looking around. There's no other path but just to walk into the water to see what that gravestone is. And as he's looking, he hears another voice. So let's say he's looking around the pond. Another voice similar to the wolf. Beware. Be aware of death. My grave to yours. And it's just a shivering voice that each word goes straight through his ears. And you can feel just this, these goosebumps, his hairs, like it's just this tingle he feels. It's just a sh this shivering, dark voice. Doesn't see the wolf anywhere now, but he can hear the wolf's voice, similar voice. Very, very um, similar voice. So he again, he hears, beware of death, my grave to yours. And now he's perplexed. perplexed. He doesn't, he's not sure what to do. He's not sure if he should go back, investigate the area. But I'm going to leave this episode right here because I think this is a perfect spot to end. Half an hour. Um, like I said, I've been a little rusty, so I don't want to put too much, I don't want to put too much time into these episodes now but i figured i hope uh this was uh just long enough for you guys after about a month hiatus of the series but overall personally i think this episode went pretty well i only got 34 lines in which is not too impressive compared to last ones but um i liked it i liked it it's just this you know pretty good start so a soft little start for um this that returning back to the misfortune legacy campaign so um i hope you guys enjoyed it i'm lux great signing off and i'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching